All right, so um, let's go ahead and get started. You can find a position that feels um, comfortable for you as long as, as long as we're seated. So you may want to sit, um, uh, just a few options, um, cross-legged like this. Uh, this is how I'll be sitting. I like to sit on a block or a bolster when I'm sitting cross-legged. And the reason for that is it allows my knees to drop down lower than my hips. And that can uh, relieve pressure in uh, my lower back and my hip area. And so if you have sensation that you feel in a cross-legged position, this is a great, this is a great option for you. For anybody, really. <laughs> for me too. Um, and a bolster also is a great is a great option. For me, I prefer a block because it has just a little bit too much give. But that's just my personal preference. Play around and explore. You may find you really like a bolster over a block. And once you find a position of comfort and dignity, I'd like to invite you to close your eyes, or if that's not something that is available to you today for whatever reason. Just a gentle gaze towards the floor is a great option as well. Just allow yourself to settle in. Taking your attention towards your breath. sensation of air as it travels in through your nostrils or your mouth and following its journey into your lungs and then as you exhale you're passing back out of your body the journey of your breath. And perhaps you'd like to focus on the quality of your breath. Not needing to change it in any way. Just observe it. And breathe deeply. Fast or slow. Perhaps you're breathing more in your chest as opposed to your diaphragm. Focusing on these qualities of your breath. If you find that your mind begins to wander, that's okay. Taking that pause to acknowledge the thought and the feeling that you're having. And pausing in, in this moment, this is mindfulness. Acknowledging this thought, maybe labeling it. And then coming back to your breath. This stillness is welcoming to you. Please feel free to stay here. If you'd like to engage in some movement, 
and your eyes quite closed. And with an inhale, drawing your shoulder blades together and sending your gaze towards the ceiling. And with an exhale, drawing your shoulders forward and sending your gaze towards your belly button. With an inhale, drawing your shoulders up, gaze up, heart open. You can exhale, curling your spine, gaze towards your belly button. And you're welcome to follow me in my breath. Or you also have the freedom to move at your own pace with your own breath. As you inhale, opening up your chest and your gaze towards the ceiling. And exhale, curling your spine and gaze going towards your belly. Continuing this movement for the breath cycle. If you're ready to find stillness, so back in a neutral position. So you're welcome to keep moving. And then when you're ready, taking whichever arm you'd like to start with, sending it across your, your chest and hooking it with your opposite arm, perhaps feeling a stretch in the shoulder. And I invite you to keep your focus on any sensations that you feel in your body, using sensation as an anchor. Where do I feel a stretch? Do I feel a stretch? Taking note that no observation is still an observation. Perhaps sensation isn't something that's welcoming to you in this moment. If that's the case, I encourage you to bring your attention back to your breath. And take that arm that you're stretching and send it behind you, bending at the elbow. So it rests, maybe it's going towards your shoulder blades. It doesn't make it. And take that opposite hand. Do a little bit of an assist here. Really keep your spine nice and straight. Focusing on either sensation or the breath. And how does this movement change either of those things? Stretch the opposite arm, sending it across your chest with your thumb. Giving it any sensation. And just focus on sensations, different sensations, perhaps noting how one side feels different than the other. No judgment or anything, just making those observations. Thank 
We're going to be moving into tabletop. Um, however, tabletop isn't something um, that you want to experience right now for any reason. You can stay in this position and go through um, the stretches that we just went through. They'll be very similar. We're just doing them in a slightly different position. So you can almost think about what we just did as bus stop one, and this is bus stop two. Um, so stay seated if you like, otherwise come into tabletop. And if one of the reasons you aren't excited about tabletop is because maybe from um, our first session together after all that time in tabletop, your wrists were a little sore, a blanket can be a really nice prop in tabletop to create some space in your wrist to alleviate some of, um, some of that wrist pain. Um, so you can take it and you fold it over twice and then rest onto like the heel of your palm onto the edge of the of the blanket as your fingers maybe cascade onto your mat. And that creates a little bit more space. Going through cat cow in this position now. With an inhale, dropping your belly, sending your tailbone and your gaze towards the ceiling, opening up your chest. With an exhale, curling your spine, cat, gaze towards your belly button, tailbone towards the earth. With an inhale, going into cow, dropping your belly. With an exhale, curling back into cat pose, moving at your own pace or with me. Also knowing you have the freedom if you want to engage in some different movements. Maybe going side to side or in circles. I'm feeling cat cow today, but please don't let that stop you if you want some of the different movements here. It's just how I'm feeling. Just moving with your own breath, all with me. And your cat really pushing away from the earth, creating space in your shoulder blades. When you're ready, coming back to a neutral spine tabletop. In this next pose, um, we call thread the needle. Staying in tabletop, inhale your right arm towards the sky. And with an exhale, taking that right hand, or left hand, whichever hand you decided to lead with, and send it through the space between, um, in this case, for me, is my left wrist and my left knee. Sending it through that space, going in through a gentle twist and resting my right shoulder on my mat. And as we breathe, really filling up our lungs, experiencing a stretch in potentially several different places. If you want to deepen this sensation, you can even send your left arm towards the top of your mat. Taking your attention to your breath and allowing your breath to be nice and deep if that's available to you. You're ready. Draw your left hand back towards your shoulder and push yourself up and back to the top. Let's do the opposite side now, inhaling your other arm up towards the ceiling. And with an exhale, now threading the needle on the other side, bringing your shoulder down to the earth, if that's available to you. And if it's right for you, sending your arm towards the uh, top of your mat. your shoulder, pushing yourself up, and um, moving your blanket if you're using a blanket. Take your hands and slide down the floor, maybe like a foot or so. 
for you. Splay your fingers nice and wide. Tuck your toes and send yourself back into your first downward facing dog of your day. Now, remember some of our landing cues. Let's have a nice deep bend of our knees. This allows um, our shoulders and our back to be as flat as possible at this moment. Roll your shoulders down your side body. So you can shake your head yes, no, dress or hold. Playing around with the weight distribution in your hands. Wanting them to be even, but also if, if there's one place in your hand where you're going to focus more of your weight, it's going to be at the L's of your hands and your index finger and your thumb. Nice deep bend of the knees, maybe stillness. Maybe we want to take our dog for a walk. Maybe we want to find a little bit more movement. That's fine too. So play around with the alignment of our dog today. When you're ready, finding stillness for a breath. And then walking your hand, uh, your feet towards your hands. Exhaling in forward fold. Maybe using a block. Maybe having a nice deep bend of the knees. One more breath. And then with an inhale, slowly stacking your vertebrae one at a time, reaching up towards the sky. And then exhaling your hands at heart center. Let's go through a few half sun salutations. With an inhale, arms up. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, stacking your vertebrae one at a time as you reach up towards the sky. And then exhale, hands at heart center. Let's take a moment here, maybe closing our eyes. suits you best, even if I'm not cueing it. When you're ready, inhale, arms up. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, forward fold. Planting your hands, stepping back to our tabletop sun salutation. Inhale, cow. Exhale, cat. Inhale, cow. Exhale, cat. Tuck your toes, send yourself back into your dog. Knees bent, if that's right, or you can start exploring the straightening those legs. Draw your tailbone towards the ceiling. Bend your knees, send your gaze to your hands. And step forward, meeting in forward fold, and exhale. Inhale, 
stacking your vertebrae, reaching up towards the sky. And exhaling, hands at heart center. Beautiful. Second sun salutation. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, forward fold. Now step back, and you can choose bus stop one, which is tabletop variation. Otherwise, step back to your plank, maybe modified plank or full plank. Inhale, exhale, lower down, keeping those elbows nice and close to your body. Inhale, baby cobra. Top to your feet, pushing into the earth, legs engaged. Exhale, pushing back through your plank, downward facing dog. Take a moment here to find your expression of downward facing dog. Bring your gaze to the top of the mat and stepping forward, beginning forward fold with an exhale. Inhale, standing your vertebrae as you reach up. And exhale, hands at heart center. Last sun salutation, inhale, arms up. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, up and up. Exhale, plant your hands stepping back to either tabletop or your plank. And then here, lowering down, if you're in play, to baby cobra or upward dog. And then pushing back to downward facing dog. Send your gaze to the top of the mat. Walking forward. Meeting with an exhale. And forward fold. Inhale as you rise up. And exhale, hands at heart center. Lovely. So those are our sun salutations. Our bodies are nice and warm. I'm warm. <laughs> and so now we're going to go through and work through our standing opening poses. We'll start with warrior two. Um, and with any of these standing poses, there's a few different ways to get into them. But a yoga teacher will typically have you step back in a couple ways. We'll experience them now. So we'll start in Tadasana or mountain pose or at the top of our mat. And this is one way, is from the top. So stepping into warrior two, I'm gonna ask you please to um, engage in your core, drawing your belly button towards your navel, really making your core nice and strong. Putting weight into, how about your left foot? Making your right foot nice and light. And inhale, drawing your knee towards your chest. And then with an exhale, stepping back as far as you can. With your back foot, have it be parallel with the back of your mat. My toes are pointing towards the side. And then my front toes are pointing towards the top of my mat. My hips are open to the side. My heel and my, both my heels really are, are close to in line with each other. They're drawing almost a straight line. Um, and you can play around with that. Maybe you kind of want a straight line going from the arch of your foot to your ankle. It's really a comfort thing. Whatever feels better. And the way to figure that out is by doing it. Your front leg is at a roughly a, a 90 degree angle. Mine's a little bit wider. Um, I can shorten my stance a little bit to allow myself to go into a deeper um, bend, but it's not really super important to me. The only thing that you really want to avoid, really, is by tracking your knee. You see how my knee's going further than my ankle? That's something you want to avoid. It can lead to injury. Okay, so, and then arm up, and that's warrior two. And that is one way to get into it, if we were to stay at the top of our mat. So, let's go into another very common way to get into warrior two. Um, and find yourself, make your way into your downward dog. Okay. 
So this is another very common way that yoga teachers may have you transition to a warrior two position. Once you've found your alignment with your dog, take your feet and bring them together so that your toes are touching. And we'll have the same, we'll have our right foot towards the back this time as well. So inhale your left leg to the ceiling, three-legged dog. Um, and when you're ready, sending your foot towards the middle of your hand so that it lands in between your hands. So you can do that a few different ways. You can step forward in one big step. Um, you can take a little bit. Or if you want to, you can also start wide. And if you have a lot of flesh, um, this is a nice way to get your um, to get your foot towards the front of your mat. Or if you have tight hips, it's a nice way to do it. I like to do it sometimes. And then cartwheeling your arms up. So we are now in warrior two. <laughs> so again. Um, whichever way you get into warrior two, I always invite you to pause and work on a strong foundation. There are a lot of poses that you can get into and out of with this particular foundation that is the foundation for warrior two. Um, so back foot, whether it's your right or your left, you want it parallel with the back of your mat. This whole leg is engaged. Um, muscles are clenched. Front knee, um, at roughly a 90 degree angle. If I look at my knee, I can just see my big toe, and that's good because it's hard to see at your angle with the video, but that way my knee isn't tracking too far to the right or to the left. It's like kind of right and even, and my hips, of course, are open to the side of the mat. Now, energetically, with your mind's eye, imagine drawing energy from the earth up into your core. And you can almost even feel that, where you almost like lift up a little bit more. Energetically, that's where we want to be drawing energy from, from the earth into our core. And then the weight is evenly distributed amongst our feet. So if you take your attention to your back foot, for example, a very common misalignment can be to roll most of your weight onto the back edge of your foot. Think about spreading that weight between the ball and the heel of your foot as well. Beautiful. So when you feel like you have a solid foundation, go ahead and add those arms. Nice and level. And I like to gaze, I like to do a glance. And here we are, warrior two. Now my warrior two is gonna look different than your warrior two because we're two different people. But the alignment is roughly the same. You can play around with the width of your stance. If this is unpleasant for your arms, hands at heart center is a great option. If your shoulders get angry when they have to be held like this for a long time. Beautiful. Let's hold this for just a breath. And then transition into our next pose, which is Peaceful Warrior. The, the strong foundation is the same. So take this back arm, and rest it on your back leg. Rotate your palm towards the ceiling. And then with an exhale, rise the back and reach in towards the ceiling. Notice how my foundation didn't change. I didn't do this number. My knees stayed bent. And my heart is open and my hips are open. Peaceful warrior. When you're ready, exhaling, coming out of that. Back into warrior two. Now transitioning into triangle pose. Take your attention to your front leg. Straighten that. And you may like this wide stance. You can stay here. This is an option for you. I, on the other hand, I like to shorten my stance a little bit, so I heel toe just a little bit. And again, play around with this, be curious. My arms are still reaching straight out, nice and even. And I like to pretend that somebody has their finger, or their, their hands on my fingers, and imagine them pulling you forward, but just your upper body has movement. So they pull you forward, and then you hinge at your hips. 
So your front arm can rest either on your thigh, your shin, maybe your, um, your foot or a block. I'll show you what this can look like with a block. And your arm goes towards the ceiling. Take your attention on your tailbone. Are you making a big C with your spine? <laughs> or are you tucking your tailbone? This helps when you tuck your tailbone, when a yoga teacher gives you that cue, it helps to keep your back straight. You may find that you actually, as you tuck your tailbone, you have to come up a little bit. And that's okay, that's just your expression. Also, if this makes you, your shoulders sad, reaching up to the ceiling like this, just rest it on the small of your back. Beautiful. Let's hold for one breath. Now let's inhale. Arms back up. I'm gonna put my block in the middle right here. Okay. Your toe that is facing the front of your mat. Rotate on your heel so that it also is parallel with the front of your mat. So now both of your toes are pointing in the same direction. Notice this whole time our hips aren't really moving. They're staying open. That's why they're called standing opening poses. <laughs> Take your hands to your hips, inhale, and then with an exhale, hinging at your hips, forward fold. Take your hands to a block, maybe your thighs, maybe your, um, your shins. You can even, if, if it's available to you, Maybe wrap your finger on your big toes. And feel free to have a little micro bend in your knees. I love the block. <laughs> so I'm gonna do that. You also can play around with um, which direction your toes point. They make you, they may make you feel different. You may notice different sensations from pointing in versus pointing out. Play around with that. See what that feels like to you. And eventually, your head will go towards, may go towards the earth. And when you're ready, take your hands to your hips, engage your core, use your core to lift you up as you inhale. So with wide-legged forward fold, let's go into that again. Um, but before we do that, there are a few arm variations, and we'll be experiencing a few of those as we move through the modules together. Um, but this is just one of those, is where your hands come down your legs or rest on the block. The other thing that I want to mention is, energetically, although your weight should be evenly distributed in wide-legged forward fold, energetically, you're actually leaning forward a little bit. So play around with what that would feel like. Being conscious of your weight distribution in your feet, yet energetically leaning forward. Beautiful. Take your hands to your hips, use your core, lift yourself up, and then take a block. I highly recommend a block or a block-like structure for this work, for this exercise, okay? For this pose, I should say. And place it in front of you, and rotate that front foot now back towards the top of your mat. Going into half moon pose, which is a balancing pose. So there's a few tips that apply to pretty much all balancing poses. Number one, engage your core. Draw your belly button towards your navel. As you go into a pose, pick one spot, maybe a foot or so in front of you, and focus on that if you can. And then also, balance poses can really be quite challenging. So if you fall out of it, just get back into it. And think about this with balancing poses also as like an opportunity to, to play, to maybe have fun. Are you ready? All right, half moon pose. Begin by um, slowly beginning to put weight into your front foot. It may look like little baby steps. If you're really strong in the hips, unlike me, you can you can lift up your back leg, I can't even show you that. <laughs> um, but this block is here for balance. 
So I highly recommend you use this at first. So let's begin to um, transition weight into that front leg. Um, and then once you have all of your weight and you have your back leg, it's really hard to talk to you and do this at the same time, uh, relatively flat and level with your hip. You can rest your hand here on your hip and you're opening up your hips to the side of your mat. Okay, bus stop one. Once you find stillness here, and you, this may be it today. <laughs> this may be where you're at. And that is totally fine. Remember, yoga is a practice, not perfect. So when you're ready, if you want to, this is totally optional, bus stop two now, is taking that um, opposite arm and reaching it towards the sky. Wowzers. Okay. <laughs> and if you find this balance, in this moment in stillness. Then you can try and explore bus stop three, which is, and I don't think I'm gonna be able to do this talking with you guys. I might stop talking for a second. Yeah, and sending your gaze oh, <laughs> towards the ceiling. And then if you really want to, you can get rid of this block altogether. <laughs> if you want to. Nothing is saying you can't do any of these things, right? If we're thinking about this as yogi playtime, I'm getting okay. <laughs> Woo! Have a play. Okay, so if you want to hit the pause button and have yogi playtime with half moon pose, go for it. Have fun. Um, if you're done and you want to move on, we're going to move to the other side now. So what we do in yoga, what we do on one side, we do on the other side. And that is the whole idea of coming into balance. So I'm just gonna move to the other side of my mat so you guys can see me. Um, and we are gonna move into um, warrior two just from standing. You can of course do it uh, with downward facing dog, nothing's stopping you from doing that. And that's no drama if you just wanna do that. So, when you're ready, put weight into your right foot and inhale your left leg towards your chest and then step back as far as you can. Take a moment to align yourself. So your back foot parallel with the back of your mat, your front foot uh, pointing towards the top of your mat, knee bent, no more than a 90 degree angle, legs engaged, Weight evenly distributed. I'm gonna line my heel up with the arch of my foot this time. Energetically drawing up from the earth and arms nice and straight. Check. And standing here in our Warrior Two pose. Warrior Two poses are named this way because they are designed to empower us, to tap into our own power, to stand strong, strong foundations, strong body. When you're ready, transitioning into peaceful warrior, take your back arm to rest on your back leg, rotate that front palm towards the ceiling, and then reaching towards the ceiling, keeping that base, that foundation where it was, breathing here, and at your next exhale, whatever that is, coming back to warrior two. Getting ready to go into triangle pose, straighten your front leg, you may stay with your stance this wide, you may shorten it. Hinging at the hips, reaching towards the front of the room. And then your front arm, your front hand finding your shin, your thigh, a block on the ground. Maybe your gaze goes up towards the ceiling, maybe your hand comes down to the small of your back. Tuck your tailbone. 
engage your legs. When you're ready, let's inhale back up. Take your hands to your waist. Take that front foot, point it towards the side of your mat. And then widen my stance just a little bit here. Getting ready for a wide legged forward fold. Inhale and exhale, forward fold. Hands find thighs, shins, toes. Maybe the earth, have a nice micro bend in your knees. I'm going to point my toes inwards. I like that feeling, so I'm going to do that. And energetically moving forward. Maybe letting your head get head here. If you inhale, take those hands back to your hips. Engage your core. Inhale, rising up. Straighten out your feet if you have them at an angle. Take your front foot, pointing towards the front of your mat. And if you don't have your block right there, I highly recommend giving you one <laughs> close pie. Getting ready to go into half your pose. So with your hand on a block or a block like thing, block like item, you're going to transition weight into your front foot. Maybe starting your little baby steps. Because I always notice I have to readjust my block. Engaging your core. Whoa. I mean, I can look at, look at you guys, but I think I need to look at the floor. <laughs> Finding your bus stop. Bus stop one. Bus stop two. Bus stop three. Remember if you if you come out of your pose, just get back into it. Hit the pause button if you want to. Have some yoga playtime. Hit the release. If you're ready, if you're done with yoga playtime and exploring our half moon pose. Make your way down onto your mat in a seated position. So we just did a lot of poses where we opened our hips up. And yoga is all about balance. What we do on one side, we do to the other. But also, if we're doing a lot of one movement, we do other movements to counteract that um, so that we come back into a position of balance. So we're not going to do some gentle twist to cool down before we go into Shavasana. So, pick a leg, any leg, and draw that knee towards your chest. I'm starting with my right knee. And you can stay on the inside of your thigh, or you can take that foot and cross over. Whatever you want to explore, I'm going to keep it on the inside of my thigh, but don't let that stop you if you want to try the outside. Then take your opposite arm and hook it around that knee, giving it a hug. Sit up nice and tall. You take your arm and send it behind you to give you some support, almost like a kickstand. And then begin to go into a nice gentle twist. Maybe your gaze will go all the way to the wall behind you or to the space behind you. Just so you're moving in that direction. When you breathe, when you inhale, Come out of that twist just a little bit. And then with an exhale, go into it just a little bit deeper. Remember to keep our spines nice and straight. Flex. 
If you'd like, if you'd like to stay here, please do so. If you're ready to swap sides, straighten out your bent knee, and draw the opposite knee towards your chest. And decide if you'd like it on the inside or the outside of your thigh. And with your opposite arm, wrap right around your knee, giving yourself a little hug. And using your other arm to provide support with a kickstand. I'm going into a twist. With every inhale coming out just a little bit. And exhale going a little bit deeper. And noticing that sensation as you go a little bit deeper and a little bit deeper. Or maybe you don't go deeper. To stay here, feel free to do so. And then coming down onto your back. And starting with whichever leg you'd like to, drawing it towards your chest. And again, going into another little twist. So, whichever knee you grab, so I grab my right knee here. I'm going to now go into a nice twist and sending my right knee towards the left side of my. Doing your best to keep your shoulders grounded on the earth. And if it helps, you can, so I'm again using my right knee. I'm going to send my right arm off towards the side. That might be a little bit too intense for you in this moment, and that's okay. You don't have to do that, it's optional. This is a really intense stretch. You can put a bolster or a block under your leg to give it support. With your next inhale, drawing your knee back to center, sending it long, and drawing the other knee towards your chest. And then when you're ready, sending that knee across your body. So with my left knee, I'm now going off to the right. And I've got a bolster on this side. I'm going to rest my leg on. And my left side's a little bit tighter than my right. And then I'm going to send my left arm off to the side. Again, that's all. sensations you feel are exactly what you should be feeling. If you're happy here, you can stay here. And as inhaling back up to center, draw both knees towards your chest, wrapping your arms around, giving yourself a hug, maybe standing still or moving. And you roll your knees in circles. Rolling in both directions if you're moving. Do it clockwise and counterclockwise. And lower back a little bit from the side. You can stay here if you like. Or if there's things that you'd like to do to get ready for Shavasana, maybe putting on a layer, getting a blanket, putting on socks, getting a pillow. Whatever you need to do, take this moment to do that, to settle in. And just a reminder that 
we'll be holding Shavasana together for about a minute or so. But if you would like to hold Shavasana for longer, please feel free to do so. You just hit the pause button right here. And finding yourself in a position, hands out to the side, feet rolling off to the corners of your mat. Allow yourself to feel heavy here. If it's comfortable for you, allow the weight of your body to sink in to the earth. Allow the earth to support you. As if you were to settle to Shavasana. some gentle movement to your fingers and to your toes. Maybe even a stretch reaching up overhead. And then when you're ready, make your way to a seated position. Thank you so much for joining me today in exploring standing opening poses. The light in me deeply honors and respects the light in you. Namaste.